Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. Peace be unto you and your loved ones. I will begin by placing the cloak of invisibility with the key of David over this communication, over our minds, bodies, spirits, and hearts, covering us all with the precious blood of the Lamb. Family in Christ, today I have a special message about the purging out of us the sicknesses to be genuinely spiritual and heavenly minded. As it reads in Deuteronomy 7, 1 and 2, when the Lord your God brings you into the land where you are entering to possess it and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Persiites, and the Hivites, and the Jejubites, seven nations greater and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them before you, and you defeat them, then you shall utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Okay, we're talking about seven nations, greater and stronger. We're talking about sins. The sicknesses we carry that must be cleansed away, purged out of us, to be genuinely spiritual and heavenly minded. And just as the promised land had to literally remove these nations to properly enjoy its riches, so we too must literally remove these aspects of soul sicknesses to properly enjoy the riches in Mashiach Christ in us. The sins. Number one, the Hittites. This nation signifies the spirit of fear and discouragement. These spirits discourage the soul continually with false fears of frightening and terrifying it from its work, sometimes raising up infidelity, sometimes false reasoning through earthly wisdom, disputing against faith and the power of God. They tell us that none can come to perfection, that none can conquer the temptations and assaults of the devil, that none can overcome sin or self and the passions and the temperaments of the old man. These are the Hittites spirits. Number two, the Gergesites. This nation signifies the spirits of earthliness and dirtiness. These spirits tempt and draw us to the earthly life and its vanities, to bestial lusts, to excesses in all things, and against the law of moderation, purity, and temperance. These are exalted on high and mighty sins like pride and indifferences, and there are debased and low and weak sins like drunkenness, and gluttony and debauchery. As it reads in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lascivious, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These are the Gergesites spirits. Number three, the Amorites. This nation signifies the spirit of bitter, fierce, talking and judging. These spirits judge this or that, and all from the root of bitterness. Additionally, these bitter spirits do not hinder the sweet lily of the valley from springing up in the soul. Even the soft, meek, gentle nature of the lamb 
from acting out its virtue up to ourselves or to others, neither friends or enemies. These perverse spirits rather incite us to require eye for an eye. They only practice revenge. These despise forgiving. They despise forgiving mercifulness and in their fierceness rage against meekness and the law of love and tender heartness and gentle soft behavior. In a word, the spirit of envy, enmity, jealousy, and rash judging. These are the Amorite spirits. Number four, the Canaanites. This nation signifies the spirit of merchandising. These are spirits that traffic in our minds, wills, thoughts, senses, imaginations, and affections. They fetch in buyers and sellers into the temple of our soul and make it run out beyond due measures in its trafficking with them. Sometimes in things we have nothing to do with all or over concerning ourselves with the multiplicity of cares about things of a little moment, we thereby pollute and defile our souls. We also sometimes oppose the Lamb's law of holy silence and pure stillness. And departing from the one thing necessary into many, we go from unity and harmony into multiplicity and discord. These are the Canaanite spirits. Number five, the Perseites. This nation signifies the spirit of carelessness and false security. These spirits open the door of false liberty. Before the crucifying work is done, circumcision passed and regeneration finished, they labor to take us away from watchfulness and to make us neglect the cross and genuinely security. And so they let in all matter of evil spirits to oppress the life of the lamb in us. These are the Perseite spirits. Number six, the Hivites. This nation signifies the spirit of speculative thinking and vain, needless talking. These spirits awaken vain thoughts and imaginations and fill our fantasies with empty romances and, and scenes. And so through our thoughts and imaginations, they press in and bring forth a multiplicity of words and many useless and sinful discourses courses and disputes which greatly hinder the springing and further growth of our divine life. They love reasonings, talks, and debates. They fill us with notions and would have us spend our lives and strength in talking in high and deep speculations and in unnecessary disputes for, uh, for and against about all things. And by these means, they hinder us from being exercised in stable obedience and diligent watchfulness. Under these Hivites, all the arts and sciences of this world come in. Their office is nothing else but to awaken notions and speculations in the fantasy and thereby to trouble and snare and perplex the pure heavenly life rising up into the soul. These are the Hivite spirits. Number seven, the Jeb Debusites. This nation signifies the spirit of pride and elevation. These spirits trample upon and despise everything that is good. They would ever be trampling underfoot the blood and merits of Jesus in the pride and might of the fire. They slight and despise the meek and humble way of the cross of Christ elevating themselves about the heart of Jesus and the power of his love. They are always tempering us to trample upon the pearl in ourselves and to undervalue the pure virginity of the eternal wisdom and the precious things of God and would draw us into apostasy with themselves, making us to sight 
the redeeming blood of the lamb and by puffing us up in spiritual pride, make us to think ourselves perfect before we really are. And so by degrees, they will draw up, they will draw us to neglect the rising life of Jesus in ourselves. These are the Jebusite spirits. Sounds like the seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride. As it reads in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, these 16 does the Lord hate. Yes, yeah, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that soars discord among the brethren. My brethren, I pray we all go to the throne room and ask the Most High Father Ahaya to purge us from these filthy sins that our temple may be cleansed as white as snow. This concludes our special report. I pray you will subscribe and share these messages with your friends and families. As always, I give all the glory to Father Ahaya, his son, Yeshaya HaMashiach and Aruah HaKadesh, His Holy Spirit. Shalom.